concern in the country that we are creating a lot of startups and that there's a lot of buzz and activity and action around ideas. The critique is that these ideas are not blossoming fully and are not becoming what in the business is called unicorns, that is to say, massive um, national if not global enterprises with a market value uh, that is commensurate. And the usual example that is given currently is Shopify. A generation ago it would have been RIM slash Blackberry. Uh, this is an issue. Um, it is one of the package of questions that goes with why the series is being designed. It is one of the package of issues that goes with why productivity has been stagnant in the country. Productivity was here in 1985. It then kind of went up, down and all over. But if you pin it again in 2015, it's almost exactly where it was in 85. 30 years ago, Trade in goods and services is what drove uh, things both nationally and internationally. Now it is much more ideas and the statistic that sticks in my mind about this is that a generation ago the S&P 500 was primarily uh, comprised of value intangibles, um, almost two-thirds if not more. Today it's the opposite. The value of firms and the value of intangibles on the S&P 500 is two-thirds and growing. Invention and innovation now requires a lot of investment, financial investment. It requires a lot of institutional capacity. And so we recognize that inventors and innovators, whether they're individuals or whether they're firms, have the right to recoup their costs and in fact benefit from their brainwave. I hope that this series adds to the very di rich discussion we're already having in Canada on what constitutes innovation and how innovation can connect with prosperity. We at CG hope that this series adds to that discussion, enriches it, and gives us new ways of thinking about something that is going to be key to the future of this country and its prosperity.